Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience in using Vim and how it changed the way I use my code editor. I started with an editor called Tani. It's specifically made for Python, I believe, and then I ended up using PyCharm instead. I can say that I've been using VS Code for quite a while now, and there's nothing bad about it, but comparing VS Code to Vim, uh, it's a whole different topic, and we'll get into that. Okay, so when I first heard about Vim, um, I had no idea what it was at all. I didn't even care about it. I saw what it could do, uh, and by the way, I didn't see the Vim motions yet at that point. Um, I only knew about Vim from YouTube. I didn't actually, you know, wanted to improve myself using Vim. I knew that you had to, like, set up some stuff for Vim in order for it to work properly. I remember clicking and, like, don't know what the hell I need to do because there was no mouse support from what I remember. And it was terrible, and I didn't even know how to quit the editor. Like, back then, it was just doing colon and then ex to open up a file thing. So it was these things, right? It was those it was those kind of things. And this is just the normal Vim, right? And I didn't really like it at all. So I stopped using it after configuring it over and over and it <laughs> and it just keeps breaking over and over again. I just pretty much just stopped using it and went back to VS Code. Uh, at that time I've already heard something about NeoVim. Uh, I've heard that it's a better version of uh, Vim. And so I didn't give it a try just yet because I had to go back and do my learnings as a junior dev and all that kind of stuff. So I went back to VS Code, but this time in VS Code, I was actually using the Vim motions inside of VS Code. And that actually got me into the Vim motions a little bit, right? I was starting to get used to the hedge JKL by a little bit, not too much. I was, I was still really slow, but yeah. And then I decided, okay, maybe it's time I try NeoVim now. And so I went ahead and downloaded NeoVim. And I did not want to have the same experience I had while using Vim. It just keeps breaking and it's just a lot of time wasted just trying to fix something that keeps breaking. All I wanted to do is have something reliable to write code on, right? And what I found out about NeoVim was that there was a package called Lazy. I didn't know what it was back then, okay? I, there was something called Lazy and there was something called Mason and all that kind of stuff that worked together with NeoVim to make a good editor. That's all I knew. But also, I wanted to mention that I had no idea that there were pre-configurations that allow you to pretty much clone the whole NeoVim repository, such as the Kickstart NVim, and start using it right away, and build your own custom stuff from there. So what I ended up doing was building it from scratch, and holy shit, it was terrible. Um, it took a lot of time. It was better than the first time. There was a lot more configurations I could look at from, a lot more file structures, a lot more uh, tutorials, and a lot, a lot of people teaching how you know get start, how you should get started with NeoVim how the file structure should be placed and how lazy works, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, it was still really hard at first. I didn't configure it just once from scratch. I did it like three to four times and it kept breaking over and over again. So at that point, you can imagine I was already um, deep into NeoVim by a bit. I also remember having one of the configs made successfully, but I did not have LSP inside of it. So how I figured that out was the configuration was working just fine. I was actually coding in it. I ended up wondering where are all the warnings at because I was not able to find a single warning sign. <laughs> like there was so much wrong with the code and then there was some things that I'm like I'm intentionally doing it and there was no warnings. So that that was when I realized that wait, there was one thing I did not set up which was the LSP. And that made me realize what LSP was. If you come from VS Code, you'll know that it pretty much has everything set up for you. And when it came to Vim, that was not the case even with NeoVim. And I was still able to finally set it up after a while, understanding a little bit about it, the more I configure it and reconfigure it, 30 plus hours until I actually finally got it working, okay? And this time with proper color schemes and all that kind of stuff. LSP is working just fine. Because I was able to move forward with every error quite fast now, uh, I felt like I had the right file structure. I've been looking into the file structure for quite a long time because I wanted to find the one that I feel comfortable using. I finally found the file structure that I wanted, so I stuck with it. At the start, I also cloned a lot of stuff and actually decided to pretty much copy and paste most of the stuff too. But after a while, I'll explain to you why that is not such a good idea long term. And also, I want to explain to you why if you are going to start using NeoVim, I'd recommend using the Kickstart pre-configurations because that will get you started into NeoVim pretty quickly. And the guidelines explained in that file is pretty clear. It should be a good starting point. I did not know that that thing existed and I decided to do everything from scratch. That took a lot of time. I learned a lot as well, but yeah, if you don't have time and you don't want to sit and fix your configuration 
all the time, then I think using kickstart pre-configuration would be a good idea. But now let's get into the configurations and how I actually overcame the struggles that I faced. If you ended up cloning NeoVim, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, but one thing you need to know is that as you keep using NeoVim, you'll start to figure out what plugins you need for a workflow and which one you don't. Same goes for key maps and key bindings. You'll start to figure out which one you like and which one you don't. You might not have to fix every breaking Lua file once you, you know, have it set up nicely. But once in a while, there are some updates that comes in and then it requires you to change some of the configurations in your file to match with the latest breaking changes. And if you do not know what you're doing or you do not know what your config is or how your config is structured, then that might be a problem because you might have to go and change your configuration again. So I would recommend if you are going to clone that NVIM kickstart, you might want to take some time to understand the configuration itself and how it works so that in long term, when anything changes, you know where to go and you know where to look. Right. So that is very important because don't be like me, because I've been cloning a bunch of NeoVim configurations, trying to make it work. Right. Which it ended up never working because it was not how I wanted it to be. It was just some other configurations that I have to, you know, adjust to. And I don't want to do that. I want something that I can do on my own. Right. Something that I can understand and I can change when there's new updates. Another good point is if you really want to set up your configuration from the start, you will actually gain a lot more experience and understanding on the NeoVim configurations, including the Lua language and how NeoVim works in general. You just get more from making your own configurations. You'll understand more about how each plugin works and why those plugins exist and something about LSP and setting LSP up for different languages, even linting, which I did not know that I had to set up. Okay. And it was, it was actually very hard to set up, but Thank God it's over. And I guess one day I'll have to go and edit it again. But anyways, next we'll talk a little bit about Vim motions. And this is probably the most important thing out of all of that. The editor is not the important thing. Vim motions is the important thing. It is not easy to get used to at all. Um, you have to really, really use it to finally get it into your head. Because when I was using VS Code, uh, I was already using some of the motions um, of the normal ones, like such as the option arrow keys or like the uh, command arrow keys to jump to the end of the line and start of the line. Things like copy line down and move line up and down, all those kind of things, right? I was already liking the way it works because I don't really have to move my hands away from the keyboard. No Knowing that HJKL was literally just right under my fingers and I do not have to move away to the arrow keys anymore just makes me think that it's better. There's a lot of things you can do with Wim motions, especially if you understand it correctly. So what I'm going to show you now is some of the things that you might actually find useful. So this is actually called a Wim cheat sheet from the website Barbarian Meets Coding. These things are going to be your priority, okay? Because like if you do understand what D, C, Y, and P does, you'll be able to link it with other motions to make the same command work. I know there's a lot of commands that you have to remember, but to be honest with you, I mean, you don't have to know all of it, right? It's just some of the important ones that you might want to really focus on first, and then you can just slowly incorporate other commands into your workflow. For example, some people might be a lot more comfortable doing one command than the other one, but all these commands will lead you to doing the same thing. For instance, in Vim, to select a whole line, you can do Shift V to select the whole line and then Y to yank it and then P will paste it. Or you could also do YY to just yank it and P to paste it again. Like if you do V to enter visual mode and then press F and comma and it'll just jump you there. So you could do it this way and then yank it and then paste it. What I want to say is you should focus more on what you think is easier to understand. You can always go and learn the hard ones later. Just find the easy ones that you can understand first, even though they require a little bit more key presses. But if that helps you understand, then go with that first. So Vim did give me a lot of fun while programming. It's a part of programming that I actually never knew existed. Saying that it taught me a lot might make it sound like I'm just a Vim nerd, but to be honest with you, I learned a lot just by trying to config NeoVim itself. And I felt like I had better debugging skills just trying to fix those errors in NeoVim. And if you config everything from scratch, you'll definitely get a clearer picture of what I mean. But which either way you choose, uh, you'll end up learning something from it anyways. 
Overall, I don't think all this time I spent trying to figure out how WIM works was a waste at all. With WIM, you will always end up finding new things to learn every single day. And there are WIM experts, content creators like the Primogen, um, TJ, Typecraft. They make really good content on WIM. You can learn a lot from them. And it was a totally different experience that I would not be able to get if I was still using VS Code. Like, I guarantee you that. I would have not found out about any of these things at all. I would not even know why LSP was even needed, you know. The things that you really need to get an editor working properly, like, it even got me trying to set up VS Code exactly like Vim. And I don't even know why I did it, but I did it. <laughs> and it got pretty close, but... Yeah, I even set up Harpoon inside VS Code, but it was still a little bit wonky. And it just doesn't feel right, you know. And that's when I realized that VS Code is just supposed to be VS Code, you know. It's not supposed to be NeoVim. And yeah, I ended up coming back to NeoVim anyways. And by the way, I'm not saying that VS Code is bad, okay. I'm just saying that you can still be as fast if you want to on VS Code. Or maybe even faster. Telescope is kind of available in VS Code. You can still be as fast. So it's not an IDE battle here. Yeah, if you were talking about Vim motions, I think that is hands down the thing that you have to learn. Not have to learn, but the thing that is the most interesting thing that you can learn right now. Because every single modern IDE right now will probably have Vim motions integrated into them. And if for some reason you have to go and use those modern IDEs, then then you'll have Vim motions as a muscle memory and that's just a good thing. That's how I ended up using NeoVim. And is it totally worth it? I think it really is because, well, with all the points I mentioned, you could even read my blog post down below. I go into more details on how I actually started all of this and where it led me to. Anyways, take it slow, guys, and give yourself time to sink into the Vim space and the Vim environment. Feel free to let me know what you think. Um, do you think you're going to be using Vim or are you already using Vim? Or you're going to stick with VS Code, which is totally fine, by the way. Like, But you don't get to say you use NeoVim. Anyways, if you guys find this useful and helpful, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe, as it really helps me out a lot. And this is literally the first time I'm doing face cam, so I don't even know how this is going to go. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.